is Audrey. And this is Harry. We're the BS Travelers. We're coming at you live from Keflavik. Just <laughs> this. We're coming at you live from Keflavik, Iceland. We're bringing you episode 13, Borneo. Yes, and it actually looks like it's winter outside, but it's the last day of summer here. I know, talk about a contrast. <laughs> Talking about steamy Borneo versus being here in Iceland where it's freezing. But let's get started because Borneo was one of my favorite destinations on our RTW. In fact, it was my number three must-see place to see, right? Yeah. So we're going to bring you all our tips, and um, as always, please remember you can always reference our Borneo post on our blog, um, our Rumble in the Jungle, jungle yeah. right? Um, so let's get started. Yeah, so really it all started with Thailand. We were in Thailand, we knew we wanted to go to Borneo, we just did not know how we were going to get there on a budget because... <sighs> Every, back in, go ahead. Well, back in my pre-travel -tra days, um, I would scroll through Pinterest and always Borneo pictures always would catch my eye. The misty jungle, all the unusual animals. Um, What's the name of the lodge? Uh, Valley? Yeah, well, the, or did, go ahead. Yeah, so oftentimes you would see pictures of the Borneo Rainforest Lodge in the uh, Danum Valley. Yes. And so you see these beautiful tall trees and these canopies and it always caught my eye. And in fact, Terry and I are really big animal lovers, so anything that always has to do with animals always um, is kind of up our alley. So um, we're in, as Harry said, we're in Thailand we're trying to plan for our next leg of the race, um, our yeah. amazing race. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, we're having a really hard time trying to piece together a great Borneo itinerary. Things are really, really expensive, or on the other side of it, it's very, very basic, simple, rustic accommodations. We're talking people reporting on TripAdvisor that they're finding snakes and scorpions well, in, their, in, yeah, their, like in their lodging. The mattress, or even if, if you're lucky, you have a mattress, and right. it's on the floor, and it's like... Yes, so it's these two extremes, and it's really hard to find something in the middle. In fact, I spent so much time contacting all these Borneo... Um, travel agents and uh, specialists, and even they really didn't offer. They, they were all kind of the same, and they were all the, all their quotes were ridiculously high. Really expensive. There's and no so middle ground. there has to be a better way to do this. Mm -hmm. It took us probably a week or two to do this. Yeah, I mean, intense this. research. We really did um, do a lot of research prior to this. And we thought the best bang for the buck was just to go mainly to this Kinabatagan River, mm -hmm. because you're able, you have the opportunity to see all five, all of the big five there, which are the crocodile, mm -hmm. the hornbill rhinoceros bird, yes, right, pygmy elephant, proboscis monkey, right, and then come on, come on, <laughs> crocodile, elephant, hornbill, oh, the orangutan, orangutan, yeah, that... orangutan, orangutan. They say it different <laughs> in different parts of the world. But anyway, really exciting to see these animals. So finally, like he said, he came across this jungle camp that ended up to work perfectly within a backpacker budget, right? Yeah, there were a few there, and I, I just did some research, and basically balancing out the cost, we came across the Kinabatagan Jungle Camp. Mm -hmm. and it ended up being about $140 a night. It came with all excursions, all the food, buffet, right. morning, breakfast, dinner, right? Um, Free for water? About, yeah, and coffee. transfer from the airport mm -hmm. for about $140 per night for three nights. And so we basically said, okay, well, that's not enough time to go all the way to Borneo. Let's spend some time in Sandakan mm -hmm. to sort of relax before we get there. Yes, because he found this great promotion at a Sheraton, so it was almost like we were kind of It was a really nice hotel. Yeah, well, we felt very pampered, <laughs> didn't we? It felt like... <laughs> You know, it felt like a five-star hotel. I know, we're like, ooh, this is so nice. I remember calling like room service a couple times, like, hey, can we have some more coffee? Because we're like, oh, we haven't stayed in a nice hotel like this for a while. But great relaxation, great comfy bed. Anywhere else, that hotel would probably cost three, four hundred dollars a night, mm -hmm. and there it was only about sixty dollars a night. I think fifty-four. Okay. Well, yeah, 60. fifty, sixty dollars. Right. So we really enjoyed our time there and just use it as a, um, if we call it like a base camp. Um, yeah, our because from gateway. there, yeah, because from there you have some options to see some cool wildlife right, or some like day trip excursion. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that we wanted to do was go see the orangutan sanctuary. Right. And so we initially, you read online, what's the simplest, just go right to the bus terminal, catch the bus, it'll cost you a dollar a person. And so of course we go. You go to the bus terminal and it's just basically a building. There's nobody that looks like they're working or there's no, no board. There's no, no very it's local just a, people doing their thing. It's shopping. just about a hundred mini minivans, maybe not a hundred, but probably fifty minivans in a parking lot, and no one has any idea of what's going on. No, there's like no terminal, nothing. And that's one of the uh, hard things about when you do these things. You read online these backpackers like, oh, just simply take this number fourteen local bus, but they never end up really 
only putting in the nitty gritty. In fact, we all um, we had heard because our concierge at the Sheridan said, "Just take a taxi." Oh, your concierge? Yes. Oh, well, fancy. Well, that is fancy, right? We were just talking about how great the Sheridan was. I think it was the only time we ever had a concierge. But in fact, you know, some buses will drop you off a mile away from the over, right there, yeah, yeah, from the same mile. from the sanctuary. So a lot of times, people always want to talk about how cheap they get these, um, you know, certain things, the transportation or these opportunities, but. When you read the between the fine lines, it's not as great as it or as easy as, yeah. as it may seem. So yeah, we went to the bus terminal. We could we found somebody, and he said, "Well, no, the, you know, I'm not, I'm not even think I said, oh, the bus comes every 15 minutes or something ridiculous." He's like, "Oh, no, the next one will leave in two hours, like two hours." And then it's like, like it's yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's new, and, still, and then it takes over an hour to get there on the bus. That was another thing too. So then we were like, "Okay, this is not going to work. Let's go back to the hotel and see if we can negotiate something with a taxi driver to take us out there." So we went to the orangutan sanctuary via taxi, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, we, we, okay, so that's all we really wanted to go see was the orangutan sanctuary, for the most part. So we got there, and there's like pure chaos occurring. Right. All these people are gathered outside. We're like, what's going on? Even the taxi driver was coming out saying, like, what's going on here? And it ended up that one of the orangutans had left the reserve and he was standing in front of kind of like the entry building yeah. putting on this great, great show. show he's out there he's got you know all the people laughing he's got um a can of pringles and he, he stole out of he a stole tourist out of a hand. hand which is kind of unfortunate for him um for the tourist or for the ringing hand well it's not the healthiest <laughs> thing like, that he should be eating like the no, but, was very happy <laughs> yeah he was really, he was really happy um but what a great experience to be able to come face to face and even for me i talk about this in the vlog um, our blog, um, that um, he was out there and he actually, I was trying to take a close-up shot of him, yeah, get a little closer. Yeah, because you kind of feel, you start feeling more comfortable, you start moving closer and closer and closer. But these guys, they're little, but they are strong. They are so strong. So he came up to me, like, like in a second, and he grabbed onto my leg. Well, he kind of went like, almost grabbed it. Yeah, he grabbed it with okay. his hand, because I was even pulling my, like, oh my, yeah, I was pulling my leg away, and he kind of had it quite tight, so... Um, I kind of broke free and the staff was urging me to kind of back away for, you know, both of our safeties. But what a great experience to have right outside in front of the sanctuary. So it was probably, we would probably sit there for like 20 minutes, half hour, watching this. They had people coming, trying to pull him out of trees. He's, he's like, <laughs> spread eagle, arms are like this, he starts peeing all over the place. It was, it was actually kind of a fun experience to see this because it wasn't your typical behavior that you would see at the sanctuary. Our taxi drivers, he's taking photos, so we're like, okay, this is not... A common occurrence here. No. We're actually getting a good experience. We're at the point where let's not even go and pay to get into this thing. Right. Because exactly. they talk about there's no guarantee that you're going to see a ring of mm -hmm. there. Right. right. It's all centered around those feeding. Roughly times. twenty dollars to get in, and you're not even guaranteed to see them. And we just got this great show. So we're like, okay, let's talk to the taxi driver. Let's sort of renegotiate the rate, and let's go to the proboscis monkey uh, sanctuary. Right. To go check them out because that was not part of our plan, and that's about another, I would say, half hour. Yeah. 40 minutes away, and there's no way to get a bus, there's no way to take a bus, like a local bus, to get to it. So we're like, this is great. We're going to get see two awesome things today, two awesome animals, that we, and one of them we, we definitely did not think we were going to see at all. The ring The proboscis. Oh, the pro oh yeah, and there were so many there. And that was cool. And what's funny is, initially I did not want to feel like we went to the zoo, but it's really great to get this up close and personal experience with these animals. I mean, we were like, what? A foot? A couple feet away? Yeah, cool, yeah, and then we even got the opportunity to um, kind of feed the monkeys at the second sanctuary. Uh, one of the guys had given us these little pancakes that we were able. So, you know, it really didn't feel like a zoo experience. It felt more like a one-on-one -on -one private kind of experience with these wonderful animals. So, um, in fact, I kind of feel like I would recommend actually visiting that um, just to kind oh, of start sure. yeah. to start your, uh, your kind of wildlife experience in Borneo. Just negotiate whatever, you know, you should pay as little as you can for the taxi driver. Right? Yeah, because you asked like with a little negotiation, I believe he, he got like around thirty or thirty-five dollars off our uh, initial quote. He started at a ridiculously high number, like that's not even close to anywhere near fair. Mm -hmm. So always make sure you're advocating for that. So then the big other thing that happened was Audrey had like her dream come true. She's an earthquake fanatic. We woke up, okay, and we're on the twenty-second floor of this building, and we get woken up by a six point oh earthquake. And the building is going like this. And I'm like, oh my god, we're having an earthquake. This building is swaying. It's in Malaysia. God knows only how well or how well this building has been constructed to <laughs> incur an right. earthquake. 
And I'm just like, oh, I want to go look out the window. And I'm like, no. I know, he's urging me away. We gotta go by the hallway. But like, by the hallway. You know, we're right on the ocean here in Borneo. I wanted to see if a tsunami was coming. And in fact, all the staff was kind of rushing. Our pool had this kind of um, clear window. And all the staff was looking out into the water to see if possibly there would be a tsunami. But, oh my gosh, what it an was experience. A full minute, and it was a full minute and the building's going like this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, please end, please end. Yeah, it was quite freaky. It was really you freaky. You could hear the ticking. Like, the building was ticking. Like, yeah, unfortunately, that was the um, time with the reports that 18 hikers had died on Mount Kina, um, Kinabalu. So um, the top of that mountain there has it had these iconic donkey ear formations that kind of looked like this, and you know it was such a strong earthquake that now it the it ears one, yeah. one, one and a half years. <laughs> yeah, the formation is totally but changed. But what's so. scary is when we were in India, the people, the girls that we were on the um, safari with, they were trying to talk us into hiking up the mountain. They were telling us how great it is and how easy it is, and we're like, okay, well, we're going to look into it. And we, you know, in Thailand, we were actually tossing around the idea, yeah, yeah of doing we're it. We're just like, it's just too expensive because they charge a lot of money for accommodations on the mountain. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a day trip. You're waking up super early and you're climbing all the way up and then you're climbing all the way down in one day. It's like a so day trip. So luckily our la laziness may have saved our lives. That's true because we always say what would have happened if we were on the mountain that day because it was a total possibility. Was, we, yeah, were, I mean, it was we could have definitely been on the mountain. So. And then the last thing we want to talk about um, within that Sandekan, we had a little trouble finding some food. Um, a lot of kind of local establishments didn't necessarily look like... Didn't look appetizing. No, they had their food sitting out, a lot of buffet, and things would be kind of sitting out in the heat. And we were coming from Thailand where everything was like so oh, fresh and so good. Yes. And like, oh. So just, we were a little hesitant to kind of, kind of experience some of that local food. So unfortunately, we spent a lot of time at uh, McDonald's and... Even one time at the local mall, at Kenny Rogers roasted chicken. Well, like chicken within restaurant. our building, within the hotel. Yeah, because there was like a, a little, little mall. mall. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we were seeking this. No, style, no, but, but at least we had some choices. It was convenient. Yes, um, because two weeks prior to our visit, we had read before we even left that there was an armed gun gunman who had taken two people hostage in a restaurant that was kind of one of the top oh, tourist restaurants. Kidnapped. Restaurant. And kidnapped. Oh yeah, I kidnapped them. And one of the top tourist restaurants in the area, it's kind of this like uh, oceanfront, seafood restaurant, very kind of touristy. Yeah, it was about, I think, two miles from our hotel, but we could see it from the view from our room. Yeah, I mean, so we're like, no. Let's not wander too far. That was part of that whole going to the bus terminal thing. It was like, it's for better safe than sorry. Right? Yeah, our own government, pirates? Bucks. Yes. No, let's try to avoid the pirates. We don't need to be getting taken <laughs> hostage on our RTW. Not for $30. <laughs> no. So we weren't, like I said, we weren't so keen on kind of hanging out in that main waterfront. So I don't think we ever told our mothers that. It probably would have been very weird. Uh, anyway, moving so then, on. Okay, so then it's about three hours to Kinabatagan Jungle Camp. And that's when you go through all of the palm oil plantations, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of see that perspective that you've read about maybe online or saw videos of. It's very interesting to see that. You know, I think our perspective is it's very shocking to see all of that jungle being destroyed and these plantations put up but i think what was really funny or ironic is when we talk to like locals who are living in it they don't it, they, it doesn't bother them and they're like oh well there's plenty of land you know there's plenty of more land and right it doesn't bother them and so it gives you sort of that different perspective i think of well they talked about this is our, our like our economy and we're doing this because we're building our country you know just just no different than oil production it's the, this is the way they're making money and um, generating income for their country so you're right, they don't necessarily look at it such a negative thing, but unfortunately... I know, but even these camps that are literally, they're very small pieces of land, and they have, even along the river, you know, where all of this wildlife is living, the oil plantations come right up to it in certain areas. Mm -hmm. And so they're pushing all of those animals into different areas. But, you know, this, these jungle camps are how they make their money. Right. And so even, even I mean, with their perspective, it's not... It's not a horrible thing to them, which is surprising. I thought that was really surprising. I thought for sure they would be like, "Oh my God, I can't believe, you know, they're doing this to our country." And but they were not, I guess, that put back by it. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. Yeah, different perspective. But it, once we got to the jungle camp, uh, we had a great time. Loved it. Yes, it was very basic accommodations. The mm -hmm. food was good, uh, but basic. I mean, very basic. No air conditioning. So sometimes the afternoons would get a little hot, and our shower, you know, our bathroom was, you know, it's a it's a jungle it's camp. It's very basic. <laughs> But the wildlife, I mean, we're going out, we would go out for like a morning river safari, after, or late afternoon, early mm -hmm. evening safari. 
Uh, we had one night safari, which was phenomenal. <gasps> that was an amazing experience, yes. A lot of owls there that you kind of catch up to at night. I thought that was really cool. Yes. Uh, but we ended up seeing everything but the pygmy elephant. Mm -hmm. And they said the pygmy elephants were way down the river about, I think he said four, three to four hours away. Mm -hmm. And even if we took the boat tour, it would, it would have been an additional, not a whole lot. About of $90 for both of us for like a uh, okay. four to five hour experience, they said. Each way, I think. Right? So three to four hours to get there, three to four hours to come back. And then there was oh, obviously yeah, no that. guarantee to see the elephants. So we're like, no, let's not, let's opt out. You know, we've seen a lot of elephants before. It'd be nice to see them, but maybe some, maybe next time. <laughs> maybe. Right? But because we really just wanted to see a ring of hand. Hornbill uh, Rhinoceros. Yes, hornbill. which we did get a glimpse of. It was an amazing experience to see that bird. It was kind of hard. It's kind of hard to find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we only saw it a few times. It's a beautiful. huge crocodile, which was unexpected. Yes, I didn't think they were going to be that big there. Mm -hmm. um, and just a lot of great primates there. I mean, I think you're going to Borneo for that primate experience. And not a lot of big animals. Even the elephants are kind of smaller inside for elephants. But um, yeah, we definitely had a really great experience. And got the opportunity to see a mother and child orangutan out of. We were like, no, how? We left. We, we left. left the camp and they're, they're like, oh, You know, and they say, well, maybe you'll see an orangutan. And, you know, they're pretty rare. They're really rare. This is the only place in the world that you can see them. But they're rare even in Borneo. In this area of Borneo. In Indonesia. They're really all of Borneo. They're pretty rare to see. Based on that documentary you saw about Borneo. <laughs> anyway, we literally are gone two minutes. We leave the pier right to our left. A mother and a child. Yeah, like us. this. And we're like, oh my gosh, how lucky are we? Right. And then later on in the trip, I believe it was our third day, we got to see a huge Man. male um, up in the tree. And then he, and then I, I even asked the, the driver and the guy, you know, is he going to come down? Because we sat around for a while. We were only both there because it was taking so long. He's like, no, he probably won't come down. You know, that's, that, that never happens. And then we saw him actually come down the whole trip, mm -hmm. which was really cool. Great experience. Yeah. And again, um, just to note, we really were happy with the Kinabatangan Jungle Camp because every time we went out on the river, we had a private experience. Yes. A lot of the camps in the area were a little bit more money. We were looking into the Ming Resort. And Wainan. Yes. Um, and actually, that was the one where I really wanted to go to. And it ended Thank up that God I don't think God we did it because when we saw the boats on the water, they were jam-packed they three, with tourists. Three boats, and they were absolutely packed. So we had a little bit smaller boat, a little bit more yeah, rustic, yeah. but our own. And we every time we went out, it was us. Yeah, and we were like, okay, let's go up here, let's go up here. Yeah, so we got to direct the show. Yeah, so when all the uh, when we saw the male up in the tree, male orangutan, and all the boats were taken off, we told our guides, no, we want to sit here and yeah, enjoy because this yeah. is a very... This is the, a highlight. Yeah, the people didn't realize how unique it was to be able to see this um, Yeah, because they saw wild. they took their pictures and they're... they're yeah, gone. we're like, no, we want to stay and we enjoy it. So. so we stuck around for at least mm -hmm. a half hour just to watch it. But overall, we do recommend it. Um, it ended up working out great for us and... And like, we didn't talk about this Borneo Rainforest Lodge. You you know, that's all the hype. That's where everyone wants you to go. Anything on the internet is guiding you to this Borneo, Borneo Rainforest Lodge. I even it's mean... like $800 a night. $1,500 for two people for two night package. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. $800 a night to go to this Borneo. Our whole trip for seven nights, eight nights, did not cost $1,500. Um, so you get sucked into this very easily on the internet. Because you well, are, even you me, are, I'm like, but I really want to go Because they almost play it off like that's the only way you're going to see animals. Mm -hmm. but it's that's not. the closest you're going to... No, you can do it without it. Um, we saw four out of the five, big five. And if we really wanted to, we probably could have seen the pygmy elephant. Mm -hmm. So, budget savvy tip, head down the Kidnipatagan River, do it for one quarter of the cost of the Borneo Rainforest Lodge. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably have a more private experience. Right. The only people that can afford that are Princess Kate. <laughs> oh, that's right. Are you showing the picture of them right now <laughs> in Borneo climbing the trees? Yes. <laughs> So that's it, I think, huh? Yeah, that sums it up. And any other details that we miss, again, is on our blog, um, the places that we stayed for our layovers, um, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's all the information on there and all the specifics. So, yeah. yeah. So thanks for joining us. Yes. Borneo. Borneo in a nutshell, right? Yeah. All right. Cheers. Till next time.